Uh oh, here comes trouble. What is up, Troublemakers? The Double Degree Club live from Wilf's Pub right here at Laurier. It's Double the Trouble. Ananya's here, I'm here, but most importantly, we have a very, very special guest here today. He just got recognized with the Teaching Excellence Award uh, 2022 for the Ontario undergrad from the Ontario Undergraduate Students Association. He's an associate professor right here at the Lazaridis School of Business and Economics. Please welcome Ken Jackson. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. So as you can see, we are not at our usual set of the DDC office where we just have a table and we're talking to the guest on the royal couch. Instead, we are taking a page out of First We Feast's Sean Evans' Hot Ones playbook. We've got all their hot sauces here, but what we don't have is the wings. Instead, what we have here today is something that you can pick up back by popular demand. You can get them Thursdays as their daily special. This is Wilf's Boneless Bites. They are back, ladies and gentlemen. So come out on Thursdays to get them as the daily special. Now, back to you, Ken. How are you with spicy food? I guess we're going to find out. Um, I don't eat a lot of spicy food. I do like spicy food, but I don't know how spicy I like it. So. When's the last spiciest thing you ever tried? The last spiciest thing I ever tried. It's been a while. COVID s slowed the restaurants down a lot for me. <laughs> That's true. So uh, I had some medium wings at Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wing in the States. The this summer i don't think that counts though fair the, enough well two years back out of retirement out of making uh, out of eating spicy food and well let's get us started vivek first one's in let's get the hot sauce Go. So I guess it would be best if we like fully submerge them into the sauce. Oh, I thought that was going to be the trick. Um, <laughs> well, I guess, yeah. I guess, I guess we weren't exactly going to let them know. Um, so this is a uh, Hot Ones classic hot sauce. From my understanding, it's a little bit like salsa-y. Um, not much spice to it, to my knowledge. But Yeah, that's something I would actually eat. It's really good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, really good. It's, it's basically like a little bit better than Tabasco and it's got like the salsa sauce. Yeah. So our first question, um, Ken, in class, you are known to be a very in outgoing, enthusiastic professor. Everyone loves coming to class, especially econ. Um, I remember last year being online, like going to your class, like even online made it so much better. Um, but outside of class, what do you like to do in your free time? I spend a lot of my time coaching kids sports. I have two kids that are 15 and 13 and have played baseball and basketball and soccer, softball. They both play water polo. I have coached all of those sports one time or another. I'm nice. still coaching water polo. Um, and that probably takes five nights a week out of my oh, schedule. Wow. Um, I end up coaching water polo in Brantford, in Hamilton. I might do some coaching in London this week, uh, this year, yeah. as well as well as here. And yeah, in this summer I was in the states a couple of times. I was all over Ontario, so that that mostly keeps me busy. Um, other than that, I have my two dogs, who some people in the class have met, and yep. I spend a lot of time out walking the dogs and uh, wandering around the city in random places. But, I know you've told us before that you always love to bring Echo and uh, and some of your other dogs out around campus. Have you gotten the chance to do that again? Uh, Echo and Alice come in with me semi-regularly. I had them here when people were moving into residence. I talked to a few people then. I had them in uh, on the weekend. I came in. I, I occasionally walk through at night just because i got to take them out for a walk somewhere. And I, yep. I live close. I walk to campus for when I come to work. So I come in through campus at like 10 o'clock on a Saturday night just yeah. to see what's going on. Yeah. It's usually interesting. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so they've been on campus. I generally don't bring them inside when I'm coming into like into my office, but I might bring them in on, say, example, this Friday. We're yeah. in office hours outside because they can be here. Nice. Do they have a building preference? Have you seen? When um, they're like walking around, is it like a part of campus that they like, or do they all I hate laz? So if I, if I come in with them, I tend to stay outside. Right. And so the tables that are outside between the library and the Alvin Woods building yep. are a really common place for me to sit, and I. 
I can work and sit there. Or uh, just outside the Starbucks, out on the outside, there's picnic tables yeah. out yeah. there. And I'll, I'll sit out there with, uh, and they can hang out. And yeah, those are two good places for me to for sure. bring them into. Right. All right, so let's bring on the next wing, uh, next sauces, I should say. Jimmy, let's bring it in. DDC president, everyone. The guy that you've seen on every single shot. Woohoo! Yeah, no, when, no, when, when the host stops eating it, that's when you gotta be careful. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this right. is really good. It's like sweet, it's like mango y. Mm hmm. Definitely. Oh, wow, this has like a, such a cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. it's supposed to be pineapple. Mm, Brought in all the way from, uh, from Maui. Totally know where that is. Anybody? James on set. Where's Maui? Hawaii. Hawaii. Thanks. <laughs> thought it was a character in Moana. Sorry, I thought you were kidding. We're, we're not putting that in. <laughs> we definitely are. That's going in the reels. That's okay. I once had a student who wanted to go on ex a Laurier student who wanted to go on exchange right. uh, to Spain because he'd never been to South America. <laughs> it takes a second. It takes a second for you to get what's happening. Um, well, do we have students? The yeah, follow up yeah. to that was I was confused and asked him. I explained that no, Spain was not in South America. And what was the reaction afterward? His, his question back to me was, why do they speak Spanish? Hey, to I which speak my question was, why do you speak English? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. That's awesome. Well, yeah. Um, so people know you as a really easygoing person, has always been a professor who's like open to talk to. Um, to my knowledge, never really shown any real demonstrations of being really angry. But like everybody, we all have a little bit of pet peeves and we're wondering what irks you the most in general or whether that's related to students. Um, huh. What irks me the most? In class, I, I, you guys have, well, in person, a lot of people talking a lot in class yeah. Yeah. is hard, especially in a room with 600 people. I get it, but it, it's definitely challenging. Um, academic misconduct is very irksome just because it takes so much time. Right. It's, it's, it's not even so much the action as it takes so much time to, to deal with, and it's, it's just frustrating. Cause, uh, but um, not a lot. I find most student behavior that irks maybe other people yeah. I find yeah that's normal I remember being like that when yeah. I was 18 and like or 20 oh I don't know I'm gonna get in trouble if I talk too much <laughs> um, we but can always cut it the, out uh, no <laughs> do I trust you to cut it out <laughs> say something really good? Gonna say the fair, um, fair. no uh, but no like I mean I'll give you an example from when I was a student I remember sitting in the back of a class reading a newspaper while a professor was lecturing and uh, I can understand now why he found that irksome. The yeah. only challenge was he, he had the wrong response, which was to ask me whether, I was whether he was bothering me. Oh, my God. He said, well, am I bothering you? Basically by his lecturing, yeah. Yeah. to which the only answer that came to mind was, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> which it was, that was maybe not the right way to approach that. But um, no, so most... Uh, most student behavior I get, and I, I, I think it's important for students to be 20 and have fun and try different things, and yeah. What is your typical strategy? Because, like, I know you, like you're, you're teaching in, like, LH 1001. Like, it's a huge lecture. Is there any strategy that you have, or do you just kind of keep talking? Um, when people are talking, well, there's two, there's two different strategies. Because right. sometimes I teach with a microphone, um, in which case you can just turn it louder. Yeah. Right, and the, the sound system in LH one thousand and one is like a concert quality sound system, yeah. so it can out talk anybody. Yeah. But I also sometimes teach without a microphone mm -hmm. because the acoustics in that room are actually very good, and so uh, in that case, sometimes I just have to stop talking and I'll just stand there for a minute and just watch people. Do they notice? Eventually. Um, How long? Does it take? <laughs> I've I've sat there for a minute, I had them stop, look at me, and I'd say, please stop talking, looking directly at them. And one, I said, please stop talking, looking directly at them, turned, and I, it was no more than three seconds, and they started talking oh again. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. I mean, yeah, because, so, like, I feel And like, they were, just to be clear, they yeah. were in the third row. They weren't in the balcony. Right. Like, they, they, they were right up front. So, that's okay. Right up front. I feel like if you're going to talk, it doesn't matter what row you're in. You're, you're just going to have the conversation, right? 
it just depends on how loud you are. Because sure. I can also hear the conversation. I actually think the class, the room is so big. I think some students, some, and, and it, it happens in theaters, I know as well. People have watch TV so much and this feels more like TV than it does like a conversation like we're there in my conversation yeah. that they move to like like they're in a movie theater or, so, or something where they shouldn't talk but it's not like the actors can hear them yeah um, but yeah I can I can uh, I can hear them and you hear you can hear whole conversations what's the most interesting conversation you've ever heard oh, I'm not repeating those um, <laughs> <laughs> the um, one you can repeat no, I mean, there's a lot of people talking about what TV shows they're, they're watching or that, that kind of thing. And you start picking up and it's hard, and especially if it's a show that I've seen before. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to not like, OK, where are they going with this conversation? Well, I'm trying to just keep talking on, on my end. It's, yeah. it, it, can be, it can be difficult. Sounds like you got a lot of multitasking going on. Oh, there, there's no question that yeah. teaching in that room to 650. I've taught to 950 in that room. Um, you've got either clickers or learning catalytics yeah. you've got my powerpoint slides and my ipads running the microphone's going and i'm trying and i'm also cognizant of what's going on in the balcony and stuff yeah it's it's a it's a different challenge i've taught room i teach right now a grad class with 16 17 students in it and that's fun it's a it it's a totally different thing than trying to teach 650 people even though the grad class is in the school for international public policy um, or the Master's in International Public Policy, and it's really the same. It's really not very different than a first-year level, like right. it, the, the content. It's, we teach it, it's sort of higher critical thinking style, but it's, it's a really interesting class to teach because it has a lot of crossover, but it's 16 students or 17 students instead of 700 students, and it's just a totally different game yeah one thing that i've noticed um i actually just had as of this recording uh my first two labs as a ta yeah and uh being able to speak for so long is something that i never appreciated because i, I I've, I've done some public speaking around you know we do the show but nothing comes close to the fact that each silence is a silence in the room um and i've always found that like man you really need water like if you do <laughs> not have water you are parched it is gone yeah, no, it is definitely a challenge to to talk for eighty minutes, and especially like in some classes, you can stop and like invite conversation and yeah. stuff. It's one of the reasons I originally, so ten years ago, went to teaching with clickers, which is like learning catalytics. So I could ask a question, and there'd be like a minute and a half break for me. I wouldn't talk, yeah. or I could have a drink of water. I could get something to eat. I could do anything, and that made teaching so much easier, right? And it, rather than because otherwise. I talk a lot and I talk really fast, I've yeah. been told. And I would just talk for 80 minutes straight without a break. And that's really hard on students, but it's also really hard on me. For sure. And so. For sure. This would be awesome on a taco. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Like, it is a perfect taco. Okay, I was very scared. These are not bad so far. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. No. You, just famous last words <laughs> on the show. I will say, see, she said, she said so far, which is good. Mm -hmm. Yep, those are those are all definitely those are things that I would order for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, very important quantifier. Okay, so, um, being in second year and like you know coming into university just last year, I know like obviously we all know how um, difficult it was, especially during COVID, but also on top of that co-op and kind of transitioning into the hybrid learning model. So just generally to students, um, what is one piece of advice you would give? My biggest piece of advice to students is just show up, right? Just show up to an event, show up to class, even if you don't think you're going to get much out of it, even if you, um, you're like this, this professor is boring yeah. or I don't really understand what they're talking about or I'm really tired I'm hungover whatever it is just show up show up sit at the back of the class if that's where you have to be just to get through that class because you never really know when things are gonna get better right. and and I think showing up is a lot of and the same, it's not just class I actually think that's true for clubs I think a lot of students they're not certain whether an event will be interesting and then they don't go it's not hard for most events. It's not hard to show up, be like, I'm not interested in this and leave. Yeah. But if you don't go, you, you just don't get involved. And so my biggest advice to students, and it's true of co-op, it's true of job applications, it's true of class, just show up. Just get up, 
and submit a resume to a job that sounds interesting that maybe you don't think you're qualified, who cares? Submit yeah. the resume. It's not going to matter to you. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's true on a whole bunch of things in, in school. Like I can, I can come up with academic type advice for students, but I'll be honest, I didn't follow it as a student. So it, but just show up and try things. I, I did as a student for sure. And I enjoyed, that's why it took me six years to get through a four year degree. And, uh, because I showed up to literally everything. <laughs> um, but I had a lot of fun. So that was right. worth it. I think, um, building on that, how many people sh showed up to online class like last year versus in person? Do you see like a difference? Or so, I, so in last, I mean, I had a really good group in EC140 last year, right? First half online, second half in person, but I ran it hybrid. Yeah. Um, this term, I, but I've run hybrid ever since. Mm -hmm. I ran, I'm running a hybrid class this term. My sports economics class is in person, but I'm recording at least the audio and my slides. They don't get a video because the camera's not working. But um, the uh, but at least this term, people are showing up. In the summer, I did the same thing, and actually attendance was a little bit lower. I've really focused on saying I, you really want to show up, but it's also only been two classes, so yeah. it's hard to say. Uh, with uh, I would have said last winter when we went back to in-person, I was probably getting about half of the class showing up, yeah. which at that point in the term might be a little bit lower than a normal pre-COVID group, but not – not wildly different, 50 to 60 percent. We used to actually, I used to track it a little bit more closely, and you'd yeah. start the term with 70 percent of people showing up to a first year class, and you'd lose two percent a class from there to the end. Oh my God. Like, and it was really smooth right. as to the way it felt people felt uh, dropped out of it. And uh, I mean, other things come up, uh, people get sick, yeah. more likely to get sick. I don't, and even pre COVID, people are more likely to get sick as you get later into the term. Other courses get busy, people have conflicts. Yeah. So the, uh, but no, I think attendance has been, has been pretty good. Yeah. I think the, I mean, the challenge of what attendance looks like in a hybrid model where people, or you're recording, people don't have to show up. This is also part of the just show up part. Is it's really easy to say I'll watch that recording yeah. later. Oh yeah. It's yeah. a lot harder to I actually watch a recording. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't watch record like we're not professional actors. We're, we're not that interesting a lot of the time. <laughs> and we're talking about stuff that is not always that interesting. It's not like watching your favorite show. Yeah. Right? Where you can go back and say, Yeah, I want to see that again. It's, it's hard to go back and watch a recording. Yeah. So I know one thing that I've noticed and Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong in this assumption, but it kind of feels like uh, coming back now, there seems to be much higher attendance than I would have thought there would. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you notice that like now because people haven't gotten the opportunity to come in person, are they more interested in coming back or is kind of everybody settled into what they usually do? Um, I hope so. I think it's, uh, I, I'm not I'm not really sure because this this week my attendance has been really good, yeah. but I don't really know what to attribute that to. Um and attendance in the summer was a little bit lower, but it was the summer, and it's things. It's so it, there's a, there's differences across terms and across courses. Uh, my attendance right now, if my the attendance in my class right now stays where it is, that'll be awesome all term because yeah. I'm getting great questions, people are engaged. It's it sounds it's just interesting. So now it's it's full, and so. It's, <laughs> Glad to hear it. Um, one thing I do want to point out for the camera is that at the start of this question, Ananya took the water. So you know that she's already slowly no, descending no, no. Uh, into okay. You're making me the look madness. Maybe she's not. She I just, just like maybe yeah, she's I just like thirsty. drinking water with my food. So I, would, I, I would be tempted to have a glass of water, but I also know that, that I'm going to get pointed out if I do. <laughs> <So>, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, maybe uh, w watch what you do with your actions. But um, are we all ready for the for the third one yes. or fourth one? I should say. This one smells spicy. Or is that just me? No, I, I, I it, see your point. It's stepping up. I see your point. Um, it has that, like, jalapeno. So this is the Los, Cali Los Caliento Calientes Verde, 36,000 Scovilles. Um, so we've jumped two times from the last one. Is it just me or I can't taste anything? Like, it's, it's not that spicy. This one isn't too bad. That one's not spicy at all. Yeah. Yeah. I guess this one is, mean, like, the, the next setting, you up for, uh, yeah. setting you up for the second yeah. half a bit. Um, as many of you that may be watching know, back in summer 2020, you started this online meetup thing called Econ Evenings. Yes. And in Econ Evenings was an opportunity for students to ask you a bunch of questions, whether that was related to Laurier, uh, 
things about how the universe, how universities in general work, or even, of course, us econ nerds who would ask you the econ questions. And a lot of it had to do with, Ken, what's your opinion on X? <laughs> yep. So given that, what would you say has been one of your most unpopular opinions that you've always mentioned to students? And that can be about academics. It can be Ooh. about econ, if you'd like, as well. Our most unpopular opinions. Yeah. I... So that I'm biased, I guess, because I can't think of anything that I've said that was with my opinion during one of those econ evenings. Now, it could be that everybody just agrees with me because it's easier to agree with me than argue with me. <laughs> but um, in terms of – I have no idea. I, I mean, so I know opinions I hold, for example, that were not shared by all of my colleagues – Okay. Which is fair because faculty, we have different opinions on lots of things. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there's things that I think that are not shared by all students, but uh, I can't think of any deeply held opinion that I have that is not basically fairly mainstream. I'm a fairly boring person in that way. <laughs> the, um, the, I mean, the, the one that comes up on social the, the one thing I disagree with on social media and I will I've publicly disagreed with people on social media is when people are basically take the position of the university's out to get me right. the university's here for right. to make a profit or to do like, to get students or something and I, I I object to that but I don't think that's a I don't think that's a popular opinion so my objection to it I don't think is unpopular what's your uh, typical response if someone says you know what universities are out to get you they're rigged they just want everybody to fail they actually like low uh, graduation rates um, is a lot of us spent an awful long time in school and spent and do a lot of work to try and make sure that's not the case and it's it I mean I, I just I just think I, I see the people in the, in the university that make decisions, whether it's professors or administration or or student leaders or other people, yeah. and they are making decisions for the reason very well held reasons. They don't I don't always agree agree with every decision that is made at the university by anyone. I mean that's I think that's pretty normal, but it's not because people are making decisions for the wrong reason. The one that really bothers me is when people say the university is just trying to make money, yeah. which is insane because the university is a nonprofit organization that doesn't make money. Um, so uh, it, that's not why we sell textbooks. It's not why we charge tuition where, where it is. So that, that kind of thing. Well, one of the pushbacks that yeah. I think people might have is, although it's a nonprofit, there are ways to manage those revenues and costs um, and, and, and how they're split up. So what do you say to that? There are. And I mean, and I think that the... And this is what I, I go back to. I don't agree with everything that, that happens, right? But uh, the reason the decisions get made are to actually try and make uh, the lives of students honestly better, like the educational environment better, the research environment at the university better, uh, the so social environment at the university better. And these are all actually things that get talked about. I've been in those meetings. I've been on the Senate Executive yeah. Committee. And people are talking about the things that students would want us to talk about. And there are students in those meetings, too. So yeah. it's not like we're hiding. Speaking of that distinction yeah. between, like, students and, like, faculty and administration, how do you find the decision-making differs as far as, like, speed or um, focus or things like that? Have you found that there's a difference between larger student bodies or, or student representatives versus administrative representatives or, or faculty representatives? Far less than you might think. I mean, I, I think students by by nature are focused on maybe maybe the next four years. Yeah. Um, they're not thinking twenty years out, yeah. right? I mean, it, but when like we put in place a new program, for example, yeah. it might be a couple of years before the program's in place. It'll be six, seven, eight years before anybody graduates from that program. There's a longer time horizon for administration, for faculty. Faculty, I would say, have a slower time process because research can take months to years yeah. uh, academic economists uh, publish uh, research and it can take a year to for someone to get back to you with a rejection of we don't like your work <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um, it can take two years yeah um, actually I, uh, a woman who uh, 
I know actually just posted she just got rejected from an academic job that she applied to in 2017. Yeah. Oh, um, so what do you do during that time? Oh, she was working. Like she right. got another job oh, and was working. Right. <laughs> they were just they just processed the they, they just processed the rejection letters yeah. at some university. I don't know where. Um, but academic life is is slow. It's actually an example of this. Back oh 2010 2011 somewhere in there. There was a suggestion. BlackBerry was going to come on, I think, as a sponsor, and they were going to give all the faculty phones, BlackBerry right. cell phones. And the faculty uniformly, like almost unanimously, said, no, never. <laughs> never going to happen because if the university gives me a cell phone, right. they're going to give that phone number to people. And nobody needs to phone me right. at 11 o'clock at night. Nothing, yeah. in an, nothing in academia is an emergency. Students may think things are an emergency. And this, this is the difference between students and faculty. Yeah. Students may think things are an emergency. We can work it out later and solve problems, right? I, I see that most commonly. You get to exams. Students are panicking. They, need, they want to know whether an exam has been, they can defer an exam yeah. Yeah. for this reason or that reason. And my answer is, if we didn't answer your question, you've got to make a decision and we'll figure it out later. We've got months. That's it's, true. It's fine. I mean, it may not be ideal, but we'll figure it out. And uh, so, the, especially academic faculty, nothing is an emergency, right? Nothing happens quickly. So, that's, I think that's the biggest difference between students and faculty in terms of speed is, and part of that is, I mean, we have a full-time, we have a full-time permanent job. I'm going to be yeah. here until I retire. Yeah. And so, if something doesn't work this term, eh, it can work next term. The students don't maybe don't have that luxury. So. Right. <laughs> Jimmy, let's let's bring him in. I I just love that you're doing a a, a, a dance. Thank you. Is that dancing? Um, <laughs> a, a strut <laughs> of some sort. This I one's a lot more us. dense. This has got to yeah. Yeah. Like this one is not moving as you as you move it around. <laughs> oh, I feel. That got it. on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel it. <laughs> so this sauce is called the Seventh Reaper. Um, there are a couple of Carolina Reapers in here. It's the hottest pepper in the world. I don't exactly how, get how this is number five, but... Oh, wow, that builds. <laughs> That's why I only dipped it a tiny bit. This one's good. We're now entering the flavor profile that I like to enjoy. Because now it's just like slowly... It's like deathly spicy. <laughs> How is that a flavor profile? I like profile? that one. See, so I don't really love really spicy food. Yeah. But that, one's, that one is about the edge of where I would say... Yeah. Or, I mean, I think that's one where I'd say, I'd enjoy that. I'd order that again. Um, I'm not sure how much spicier I'm going to enjoy <laughs> as opposed to get through. I mean, this one definitely yeah. does give me a little bit of understanding about where we're going to go over the next few... In uh, the second half, oh, so to speak. In the actual <laughs> second the, half, yeah. I guess. <laughs> So, uh, Professor Ken, seeing as you started teaching at Laurier in 2008, um, I'm sure you must have had some weird interactions throughout the years. Um, so what is the weirdest interaction you've had with the student? Oh. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. It depends what you mean by what qualifies as weird. Yeah. The, uh, Whatever you consider to be weird. I get... I run into students randomly all over the city of Waterloo, occasionally in Toronto. Um, I will get random, I, will get, I walk home from work and I'll get random people driving down the street yelling my name out the car windows, which is weird when I'm by myself. It's really weird when I'm walking with my kids and they're like, what is going on? <laughs> that is strange. Um, the, uh, and, uh, and then, I mean, I, I have the interaction with students every year on St. Patrick's Day with yep. the chaos that happens around here. I often go wandering around campus and I'm talking to some drunk students as, <laughs> as, as the, as, and different houses. It's, it's interesting. I, I, I don't object to it. I was a student once and yep. I understand it. Um, and uh, so, but I don't think but those interactions are weird. Ones where people are yelling my name in Sobeys. That's that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> just, that Does feels that strange. Happen? It has happened. Like you're just walking, doing your own groceries, and all of a sudden, Ken hey, it's Jackson. Ken Jackson. Oh, let me put it. Actually, yesterday, yep. yesterday oh, I was in God. Starbucks, um, down in Uptown, uh, near the Balsey School of International Affairs, where I also teach. And I was waiting for my coffee, and behind me, I hear my name. But they weren't. I, so I turned, and they weren't looking at me. 
they were talking about something and my name filtered into the conversation two or three times. Mm -hmm. right. I couldn't hear all of, I didn't, wasn't listening to their conversation, but it was very strange. Because, I mean, it might be another Ken Jackson, but I, it, I don't know. It was, it, it, I do get that a little bit. And that, those are the interactions that I find kind of weird. And because I also, I mean, some people come and talk to me and that's great. Yeah. It's, it's the random yelling of my name as you drive away. <laughs> like, okay, what am I supposed to do with that? But, I don't know if you know, but whenever you go to bite in the morning before class, yep. it's like a it's like a celebrity pulled up. Like I my friends will be texting me at eight thirty in the morning, yo, Professor Ken Jackson is here. Like he's here, he's here. I'm like, Yeah, he, he works there. Like I'm sure he, I'm sure I he do. is. I will also say if I sit and drink coffee it, at bite, I am happy for students to come talk to me. Right. Right. It, this is actually this is one of the things that I wish students would realize is if I'm sitting at the university in a public space, it's not like I I mean, it's not like I don't want students to come talk to me. If, I, if I'm working on something which requires all my concentration and I want to do that by myself, I'll either be in my office with my door closed or more likely I'll just be at home right. where I have my own office yeah. and nobody can bug me except my dogs. <laughs> but um no, so if I go down and sit, I mean, and sometimes I'll run down and grab a coffee, a bite, and run back upstairs. Fine. But if I go down and sit, I'm sitting there, I might have my iPad open, I might, or something like that. But I'm happy for students to come talk to me. So, uh, yeah, if your friends are texting you, just tell them to come talk to me and say hi. <laughs> you guys hear that? Yeah. Frax, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Now we're just going to have lineups there you go. to meet well, Ken. I mean, uh, my, op my course outline for my sports econ class this term says I'll have office hours on Monday and Wednesday afternoon in my office. But I'm also available before class where I'll probably either be in Byte 75 or the atrium. Yeah. And so I'm, I think it's actually part of my course delivery. Right. So, yeah. Is there any particular spot, whether that's at Laz or that's uh, around the main line of Laurier, what are some spots that you really like hanging out at? Well, I mentioned, so actually it was probably before we came on camera. I was talking about um, when I bring my dogs into campus, I tend not to bring them inside. So outside on campus, uh, either the tables between the library and the Alvin Woods building, uh, or the picnic tables outside the concourse near the Starbucks uh, on campus. So those are sort of the outdoor spots that I tend to find. Near the, over near the Will statue sometimes, depends on the day. Um, inside, probably the Lazarus Atrium. Either sitting at Bite or sitting in the atrium uh, are pretty nice. The fourth floor patio is nice when it's open. Uh, hasn't been open a whole lot in the yeah. last th three, four years. But the... Uh, I, and I haven't been out there. That's not somewhere that I've gone, but I, I can see myself go, getting out there the, this year as the weather is good. Yeah. Given that Laz thing showed up around uh, early 2010s, how is that experience moving into the building? So uh, the Lazardis building opened in 2017. Not early 2010s. It was early, early 20. <laughs> the uh, it was First supposed to be 2015 or so. There yeah. was there were some delays getting that building up and running, um, and. I mean, the biggest thing from, from personally was it meant we went from the largest room we had sat 450 students, which meant that we needed multiple instructors teaching EC 120 in any one term to a room that seats 1,000 and we can have one instructor teach all the sections, which yeah. just changes the, dynamic, the, the dyna dynamic of that course a lot when you don't have to coordinate with other instructors. The biggest thing is I can say anything I talk about, you're responsible for. Yeah. Right. You can't do that when you're trying to coordinate across people. And I can't just go off on tangents yeah. and then say, no, you are responsible for knowing that, yeah. whether I do that or not. But um, and uh, so I think that's one of the big things. I mean, that that's a big change for me. The, the environment. Uh, the one thing I'll say, I really wish the atrium in Lazarus Hall had way more seating, yeah. way more tables, yeah, way more places Agreed. for people to sit. Um, I like I walked in there on Monday. I had class starting at 1130. I probably walked in there about 11. And I was like, I just want to sit down yeah. and there's nowhere to sit. Yeah. And um, that's the, that's probably the one thing I wish I understand one of the, I mean, they use that for a variety of events and having to move furniture in and out is yeah. a pain, but I really wish there was some more furniture in there. So, and bite 75 is often full. So yeah. we need a, we need a bigger coffee shop. <laughs> oh yeah. That's for sure. I know personally just this morning walked out of marketing at nine 50 went over and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to grab a quick iced coffee. Realized the no, line that was like, oh, that's yeah. not happening. No, you aren't. I actually, I, I, I talked to, there's a couple of staff people there who I've talked to and I have on occasion refilled a coffee without standing in line and I go back and pay them later. Um, uh -huh. But okay. there, there are advantages. I cannot. It's on camera. Oh, <laughs> it's on camera, folks. It's on camera. 
Um, Thank you. This one's the Hot and Saucy's Collared and Ghost. This is like straight like brown. Like this, there's no color. It almost blends in with the cup that we have. Yeah. In. It is. It is. So this one's the Collar and Ghost. Um, reading here that it's best with a home cooked meal. I'm not sure. <laughs> If I'd often be putting um, this in my home cooked meals, but this is good. Anya's hasn't gotten into the sauce no, yet. <laughs> I'm like touching it, and I still taste it. I, I I I think you can dip it in a little more. I believe in you. This is like peer pressure. Oh, I hit one. That is. <laughs> I went into the. Oh my god. Okay. Definitely hotter, but I want still. Still it's, still it's still a bit tame. And I know that the, the jumps are now just going to be off the charts. Um, expect. I hope not. <laughs> Ananya, I Ananya's already, already started. <laughs> um, all right, My so... nose is like dripping. <laughs> That's not a good look. So we started talking a little bit about some interactions with students. And of course, more on like the sense of like where you might have had a weird interaction with them. But I'm wondering what it's felt like to you has been one of the most embarrassing moments of your teaching career. Um, whether that was embarrassing in front of teaching a whole class or whether that was just walking around. Wh where would you put Ooh. that? I don't embarrass easily. Um, and, uh, okay, that's getting hotter. Yeah, as <laughs> <laughs> we're going. So, I mean, it, uh, examples of things like that have happened to me, I've. I once walked into uh, 1E1, which is a 300 seat classroom. Yeah. Two minutes into a full EC120 class, picked up my um, coffee cup, except yeah. I grabbed it wrong, and I, <laughs> I grabbed the lid, yeah. not the whole cup, and the, it came off and just covered me. Oh, goodness. Oh <laughs> now, it was water, not coffee. Yeah. But I was still covered in water. Right. In a full cup of water. And, uh, did I you have, have like an extra shirt or, uh, or did you just go on? I went on. I, if, I may have taken more than five seconds. It felt like about five seconds. Yeah. And I said, well, I can keep going. And I just went and taught. By the end of the lecture, I was dry. And uh, so that was embarrassing, but not super embarrassing. Right. I think, the, I mean, the hardest thing for any faculty member is you find yourself in the middle of a class feeling unprepared. Right. And early, I'm sure it was early in my career was the most earliest was the times I was most embarrassed. As you get older, you either you become a little more prepared and uh, you become more comfortable with just going off the cuff or you become more comfortable saying, you know what, I'm done. I got nothing left I want to talk about today. Class is over. Right. <laughs> and uh, and so. The, the embarrassment of being unprepared for class or unprepared for a situation has gone away. Um, and no, most of the other stuff, like I don't, I don't embarrass easily. I, students fall asleep in my classes. That doesn't embarrass me. That's, that's not my problem. Um, I know one thing with public speaking a lot yes. is like you might have that moment where you kind of just blank. Did you find that happening in earlier in your teaching career or even now? Um, I, th I think so. I, uh, not that much, though. And I mean, so there's two things. One is I always teach with slides. Right. And um, and also as I've gone on, like you just you, re you as you go on in a teaching career, you come up with stories that you can tell yeah. and shift into. And so you get better at hiding those blanks where it's like, I don't know what I was going to talk about here, but we're just going to move on. I also I'm sure I did this when you got when I taught both of you. And there were classes where I get to a slide and I'm like, I don't remember what I was going to say here. Yeah. We're just moving to the next slide. Like yeah. <laughs> the class keeps going, it's okay. Um, and so you get better at, at really not covering your tracks because I'm not pretending that I didn't blank out. It's just moving forward because yeah. we just it's just part of something that happens to everybody. Um, I was really nervous. I I, I hated public speaking entirely right. until really becoming a professor. So I was super nervous to, uh, presenting uh, when I was a PhD student. Uh, like hands shaking kind of like kind of thing yeah. which really I mean really common yeah. and it just takes practice of standing up in front of people and yeah, you can keep going and uh, and also you get better at knowing your stuff I don't like um, I can't act I absolutely cannot act if you ask me to get up and do some sort of dramatic performance I can't do it yeah 
I I like talking about things that I know something about, and I don't like talking about. I, so I that's when you know this is real. <laughs> Everything oh, we yeah, see no. here, I don't this is real. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anani, anything on that? I can like barely like function right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like I, I'm already like feeling it. Well, I think that's a perfect time perfect. to to move on to number seven. So this one's the uh, number seven, Tire Things cor- Curse. Or Tear Fing's Curse, that I think. That does is not sound good. Sean <laughs> Evans talks about it. It's from South Dakota. <laughs> he's not going to make it. <laughs> so this one's a 99,000 Scovels. Um, oh, you're like dipping the entire it's thing. Like, oh, oh, you got to. God. You got to. Um, but you don't actually have to. This is a... Uh... Oh, I don't think I can. <laughs> That's. I don't think it's an option. <laughs> Okay, you can either dip it or eat it, but not both. I mean, no, no. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I... No, that one's good. So, this is, like, that one's good. It's hot. Exactly. And, and it has my, a good flavor. It's got a good flavor. But I find the, the earlier flavors are better. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So, they're, get, they're moving towards just hot. Yeah, and yeah. And that's the flavor. This one's got a combo of oh, no, habanero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a bad idea. Did you dip it fully? I dipped like half of well, it. Good. Well, it's a good start. We got habanero, ghost, scorpion, all combined. Wait, I need to. Like, we have to give it on your free yeah. moments. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of people have their own like you know pe- idols, people who they look up to. Who is someone that you look up to? Oh, okay. Um, that's gonna take me a second. The uh, Cause that, so I have uh, I have academic mm-hmm. people yeah. that I that taught me that I learned a lot from I didn't went to UBC and and I have faculty from from UBC that I really look up to that I'm assuming people here don't know. Um, well, I'll shout M- them out anyway. M- for, M- 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 Mukesh, Mukesh Eswaran is one who was one. He was on my PhD committee. Patrick Francois, Nathan Nunn, that was my PhD committee, and they were all really good to me. And I learned a lot from each of them about right. different parts of of being an academic. Um, one person from here, uh, and I'm going to try and get through this. We'll see if I can. Leanne Holland Brown was the dean of students that predates probably all of you. She uh, she she uh, died in a car accident, not uh, 2018, yeah. 2019, and she was someone that I worked together with really closely for the 10 years basically that we were both here. And uh, she was she was an awesome student leader. Like she. Uh, she had an attitude of we can we can do things together we can get the students on board and it was very much a student's first attitude that i i really i think i sort of brought that into my uh career a lot and another one along the same lines actually uh, nestor korchinski was an academic at ubc but he was the director of the intramural sports program at ubc so i work i worked for the intramural sports program at ubc for a long time right. which was a big student-run organization sort of part of athletics sort of not it was crazy what they let us do um, because we'd hold beer gardens for two or three thousand people. We would hold. We had events that uh, had people climbing over twelve foot walls. We, oh I was nice. the I was the director of finance for a million dollar plus organization as a student, and we could sign little pink pieces of paper and um, the students for other students who could then take those and get paid in cash from the university office. Wow. It was insane what they let us do. They've changed some of the rules yeah. um, since then. But uh, And Nestor was one who was always at work. He was always engaged with students. And he was one to, like, if you asked him to do something, he just jumped in and, and did it. And he was, a, he was a sort of fixture on the UBC campus for decades, even after he retired. He went back and, and was there all the time. So I'd say those, are, those really are sort of the, the faculty. Uh, Leanne here, for sure, and, and then Nestor out at UBC were three people that sort of shaped who I, the way I, I'd say shaped the way I see my university career part of that yeah. part of it. So. Speaking on a spectrum of yeah. things like uh, like really close friends, or <coughs> I think something just went into my throat. <coughs> it's totally not just a spice. Um, but if you had to think about a spectrum of like really close friends to maybe like people in an office or even students doing group work on a project, how is the relationship with other faculty typically? Um, does it go as close to something like close friends, or is it typically more office e, or even something like students doing group work? Um, I think it's all of those, with different people, right? right? I mean, there's we in economics we have thirty, 
two maybe faculty. Uh, I'm friends with some. There's others that I see at work and don't see outside of work. Not usually, be, not for any really good reason, just because that's the way things work yeah. with friends. Um, sometimes we're working together. Uh, and sometimes, just like students, sometimes you're working together as a group because you put that group together. And sometimes you're working together with a group who got put together for some other reason. Yeah. And, um, and that's all just part of a work dynamic, right? And so uh, I think it really depends on the scenario. And I think so most faculty have some faculty that they're really good friends with a lot. There's, I mean, at, on campus, there's over 500 permanent faculty. There's maybe yeah. 500 to 1,000 uh, part-time fac or uh, contract faculty uh, who, and you're going to be friends with some. I'm sure there are some that are would be enemies if that was a reasonable word for that. But uh, most of them are, are work colleagues and you see them at work and, and, uh, and I have a lot of respect for the, the colleagues in, in the economics department and the, the school of business and economics in, in, as a whole and at the university. So it's a matter of piecing that together. So, Perfect. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for the famous number eight? Yeah. For Stop. the record, Imad is wheezing under his breath. I can I'm hear not, it. I'm not <laughs> wheezing I, under my I, breath. No, no, no. I swear to God, I can I'm hear I'm just it. a heavy breather. No, um, no, no. The no. breathing's getting heavier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Oh, that's the bomb. Oh, All yeah. right. Okay, that is quite literally. Thick. If there's a close up on this possible, like zoom that in because this is. Let's don't worry about it. Um, but for those on camera to see. Gonna fall. <laughs> that's a good point. All right. Let's get started, though. We just got to jump right in. I've had that flavor before. Oh my god, that's a lot. That was not easy. <laughs> that was way too much. <laughs> wow. That's good. That's good. Huh? That's good. That uh, also starts to build. More? <laughs> <coughs> All right. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, I'm surprised you're, you're just trooping through this. That one is hot. That one you're feeling in my throat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. I, mean, I can't even talk right now. <laughs> well, don't worry, because I've got this segment now. Can we have a recurring segment on our show that we like to call Our Two Cents, where each and every episode we ask our audience to come in, send us questions to get our totally unqualified, unfettered two cents. Now this time around, we do have someone significantly more qualified than us in probably every dimension. So let's bring out the laptop and how does this sauce build? <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we did have a really interesting question and I'm glad that we did eventually get around to an econ question. But students are asking, given that a lot of people have uh, recession fears going into 2023 what would you say is kind of the student's guide to navigating a recession if that's okay. a different guide there's like tears in your eyes <laughs> it's that's uh, hot like that's it's it just builds <laughs> you need to take the laptop away <clears throat> Okay, student's guide to a recession. Um, the, yeah, all right, definitely not. <laughs> I've been known to cry before, that's okay. Um, the, uh, so the first thing is, I mean, as long as you're a student, it's fine, right? Being a student during a recession is not a bad thing. Right. The, uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> the, uh, so, I mean, if you're in second year, if you're in third year, um, can I have some goldfish? I'll <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a couple. Yeah. I'll probably take a couple. <laughs> <laughs> it just, there's no, there's no end. There's no end to the buildup. Holy crap! 
Okay. This is so painful. You heard it here first, folks. This is not an exaggerated song. <clears throat> Number eight was a big step. That was a big step up. Okay. So in a recession, uh, so if you're still a student, it's, you'll be fine. Right. Um, if someone was thinking they're graduating in April, right, or they're finishing in April, they're graduating in June, they're finishing in August, they're graduating in uh, September. Or to be honest, they, gra they just graduated. So, right. I mean, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. One is, I mean, right now, if you can get a job and you can get a good, stable, permanent job, I'd probably jump on that, right? If I had to debate right now, if I had a job offer that was okay, maybe pretty good, or I thought maybe I'll take some time off and go travel. I might take the job, right? Try and get into that job market. Try and uh, step forward like that. Yeah. Um, if I And the same thing will be true, I think, coming out in April. I think one of the things that we always see in recessions is more students either stay in school or go back to grad school. Um, so, But I tell students all the time to do that when they graduate. If you're going to graduate at the end of April, you're thinking about going to school, apply for some jobs, apply to grad school, and then see what the best option is. And I think it's being a little bit flexible and recognizing that you're not going to uh, – you may not get the perfect job. You may not get what you dreamed of having. Uh, but – but you might, so move forward. The other thing is, I actually don't expect, and I will be proven wrong, this will be on camera, yep. I don't expect this recession to be, It's. it doesn't feel like it's 2008, it doesn't feel like it's March 2020. Yeah. It's going to be a very specific recession, which is going to hit very specific sectors of the economy. Things that are supported, but the housing market might drop. Right. Um, as someone who owns a house, not super excited about that, but whatever. Um, I wouldn't be taking out a lot of loans right now because interest rates are going to be high for a little bit. They will then probably come back down. If we go into a recession, they'll come back down. Um, but I personally think the recession fears, I, th I, I have a lot of faith in the Bank of Canada to yeah. moderate the recession and the Federal Reserve in the States, the European Central Bank, to moderate the recession so that it's maybe not as bad. And... And I think if it does get bad, we'll see more policy come back out. The, the federal government has been very active, and uh, and things are things are going. And th this is the other thing: is we're talking about going to a recession. We're also in a world where nominal GDP is rising faster than it's risen in decades, right? And so government debt is shrinking as a fraction yeah. of GDP really quickly. And so we're going to be able to move forward. Does your answer change at all for students who are maybe in co-op programs? Do you think that that makes a huge difference? No, not from what I've seen, right? right. Because most of our co-op employers, I mean, so I don't know the UW program as much as I know the Laurier program, but most of our employers come back term after term after term. I'll be honest, co-op students, co-op students are not expensive for a firm, yeah. right? They're a really good deal for those companies to hire. Uh, they're getting, they're, I mean, basically, they're getting students who are going to do some work, work that's of use to them. And they also get a really good, long, extended job interview, basically, where they know, what, do I want to hire this person yeah. back in a year? Or do I not want to hire this person back in a year? And that's got a, there's a lot of value in that, especially the double degree group who generally get higher salaries into more, uh, into, us, uh, more technical jobs. Yeah. And it's really that extended job interview. Like, they, they, you guys, some of, my, some of you might have been on extended job interviews already where you've got multiple tasks to do and they're getting you to do things. Yeah. They can do that. They do that for a whole co-op program. They never need to do that again for you. And that process actually is really useful for them. So I, I think from what I've seen in past recessions is employers keep coming back. They keep coming back. They keep hiring because you guys are cheap. What's expensive is you guys after you graduate. Yeah. You guys, when you're co-op students, are cheap. And... Uh, and we might see wages drop a little bit for co-op students, but like the money is a, is a part of the benefit, but it's a smaller part of the benefit. Yeah. So. That's actually a really good way of thinking about it. Never really thought about the co-op program as like a, basically an opportunity for companies to do a really long job interview, a whole four months. So it's, this is actually something that I think the university um, and uh, we undersell uh, the value of access to students to right. companies. So I get companies that ask me if they can, like, pitch something at the start of a class in EC120. And my answer is no, because 
being able to do a two minute advertising spot at the start of a for, in front of 700 people yeah. that has value that if you're a company you can pay for that yeah. and you can't pay me so I can't let you do this so um, so I only the only people I will let talk at the start of a class are student groups because right. okay fine they don't have to pay but companies access to hundreds of students that's that's really valuable just to, to employers and it's true at co-op it's true when they sponsor different events and that kind of stuff and so it's really good all right. Well, shout out to Ben Chris Wong for asking the question. Um, Good question. I think we're all ready for number nine. So this one is the from Dingo Sauce Company, the Psycho Hot Sauce. It smells pretty good. I definitely have to read out the starting of this. Aussies like it hot. You may recognize Dingo Sauce from Season 11's Widowmaker, and if you do, you know what kind of pain you're in for. The blend of super hot peppers includes some of the world's hottest Trinidad Maruga Scorpions peppers. Great. Uh, now what I've heard is, even though the jump in Scoville's is like five-fold, it's not as bad. Hmm. Because once you've passed the bomb, everything else is easy, but... Because you just don't have receptors. <laughs> exactly. Right yeah. Not to bring in some physics, but it is a little like, you know, how you feel acceleration, you don't really feel, you don't really feel velocity. And I feel like we really had... Oh. Wow, I love that I got de- like Ooh. dry <laughs> stares from the rest of the set here. Everybody's like... <laughs> We hated physics. No one wants it. I like physics. Really? Yep. My dad's a nuclear physicist, and I... I did That was where that. I started. I started my undergrad degree. I was in, in honors physics. So I was in honors math. I lost in honors math for one week, and then I was in <laughs> honors physics. Math was stupid. Um, <laughs> what, uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> what, what, what immediately threw you off? I'm just like, I don't want to do this. Uh... Professor gave me a problem set first day, said you should be able to do this. I did not even understand the, what the questions were asking me to do. The, uh, I didn't know whether the answers were going to be numbers, letters, colors. It could have been anything. <laughs> I came at home. My dad, who was a nuclear physics professor, took one look and he said, I don't know how to do that. I said, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I have since realized that um, it may have just been a hazing exercise. Like he may have just been... Here's 10 problems nobody knows how to solve. Um, let me know what you think. And this is at UBC, right? You gonna make it? <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> Your favorite question, apparently. I don't know what the questions um, are, though. It's about oh, us. I, I it's remember. about us. I remember. Okay. So, <clears throat> wait. Okay, so. <laughs> In previous lectures, you have taken jobs at double degree students notoriously, yes. whether that be online or in person. So, uh, be honest, what are your true thoughts on double degree students? Keep in mind, everyone else in the room is a double degree. This is the double degree club and after all. And it's on camera. I could take all of you. Uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, so, let's step back. When I started teaching you see 120. Um, the double degrees, so we had seven sections. So, so sections were a little smaller, 250 to 300. All of the double degree set students were in one section. It is coming back. Um, all of the double degree students were in one section, and there were very few other students in that section. They were incredibly loud. They like they talked more than anyone, and I decided that they talked because they were bored. So um, I said, "Fine." You, I had one section; I didn't have anybody else in that section. Yeah. So I figured, well, "We'll just step it up." So I took the level of that class, the clicker questions or learning catalytics or whatever, and just went harder and harder until I got to questions that people did not answer. And uh, and, and and from then on, I just enjoyed it. And so it was the back and forth between um, students who wanted to be challenged, I really like, and, but also they need to be brought down a peg every now and then. So, um, and, and also I had some of my most interesting interactions with students in class with double degree students. I re still remember, I don't know, it was the first year I taught first e econ 120 and maybe the second or third. Two students showed up at, in class, late September, both wearing suits. 
which is weird. I mean, occasionally you get a student wearing yeah. a suit, but they were sitting in the front row. They usually sat in the front row. They didn't normally dress in suits. And they were both wearing suits. I'm like, has he got a job interview today? Which was the, I was expecting them to see us. And I was just interested to know where they were applying. And they said, no, I just ran out of laundry. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, it was. It was just before Thanksgiving. I'm sure they were going home at Thanksgiving, yep. getting all their laundry done. And I was like, okay. Maybe. To be fair, between the Math 135, 137 assignment plus your B111 presentation, laundry can take a little bit of a, there you go. Um, a back burner there. So, yeah, no. So I've always taken shots at the double degree students. It's in fun. I was the program director uh, for business, including the double degrees, for a couple of years. And I had a lot of fun working with the double degree students. And, and, I've, and I've always taught them. So when I taught EC120, there'd be one section out of seven. And I always took that section as one of my two sections to teach because I had the most fun with it. Um, but, uh, yeah. And you guys do weird things and you have a different environment. I also find there's a distinction here between most first-year double degree students, I would say, EC120 and 140 are their two easiest courses all year. Um, and not because they're necessarily easier than BU or hard, easier than BU 111 or 121 for most students, but they're more mathematical, so they become easier for yeah. a double degree student. I think we can all probably attest. To and that so, yeah. it's it's the easy it's I'm the easy course, and I gotta I, I gotta defend myself a little bit. And <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so. Guys, I literally feel like I'm hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> I love that throughout this conversation, I have seen Ananya slowly disintegrate. Just, just no, lose it. I don't, like I can't even feel my head. It feels like I'm drunk. <laughs> and I'm you know, one there, there was a point in that conversation where I literally felt like everything in my head just went up here <laughs> yeah. and just kind of hung around for a bit, and I was like, "That's not a good feeling." Um, but. Aside from, I guess, what many would call our sort of like technical aptitude or anything like that, is there anything more qualitative, more like socially different that you found um, about double degree students that uh, really that you don't find with other students? Are you eating bread with ice cream? It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. I can't lie. You know, people like okay. dip their fries in ice cream. That's like me. Like I didn't know people. I, 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 I've <laughs> never heard. <laughs> I, I'm not actually in. Okay. Anyway. Um, what makes double degree students different? Um, it's, it's a challenging program. I think that there's a, there's a different stress level, uh, for a lot of, st of double degree students yeah. and man learning to manage that stress. Now, some learn to manage it. Some don't learn to manage it, but, but stay in the program. Some don't learn to manage it and don't stay in the program. Um, and all of that's okay. But, uh, I mean, I think the biggest thing in first year double degree is learning to manage the stress. Yeah. Like the next day will come and you'll keep going and it'll be fine. <laughs> um, you, <laughs> but uh, that's and the so stress you need to manage <laughs> the um, and so I think I mean that's part of that's where it comes from with me poking fun at the double degree students is trying to basically give you guys an outlet to manage yeah. that stress of okay it's fine we're we're moving we're all moving on and uh, the uh, so I see that. I see, but no, I mean, I'll be, well, I mean, in general, across campus, student groups, there's identifiable quirks of student groups, but they're kind of, I mean, in some ways, they're kind of like racial stereotypes in which it's like, yeah, I can see that, but it's really small and there's not that big a difference between groups. There's not as big a difference between groups as people say there is. Um, and uh, so... There are students in other programs that would do just fine in double degree, but that's not what they want. There's students yeah. in double degree who want to be in some other program but aren't. Um, I've definitely talked to some of them over the years, um, <laughs> and I don't know why they're doing what they're doing because it sounds painful if you don't want to do it. Two's better um, than one. Better than one. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I mean, it's a great program. It's a great program if it gets you where you want to be. If it, does, if it gets somewhere you don't want to be, like this is the thing about university. Yeah. There are lots of great programs. They all lead somewhere, but if where they're leading you is somewhere you don't want to go, <laughs> it's not really helpful. Yeah. I've always used accounting as the example for this, because students will say, "But being an accountant will get me a being in accounting will get me a job," and my answer is, "It'll get you a job as an accountant, which you don't like. Like if you don't like doing accounting, 
don't become an accountant yeah. because you won't like your job. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's true of uh, programs across the university. I think students, and I mean, so I talk as someone who switched degrees four times, majors four times as an undergrad. Right? I was searching for something I enjoyed doing. I eventually found physical geography, which I don't do, um, but I did enjoy it. It was fun. Yeah. And I did it for a little bit after I graduated. So um, the uh, so I think it's it's just a matter of, it, there's a bit of dedicated focus, but it's the differences across programs are pretty small. So. I think we're ready to, uh, I think Ananya's are you, not are so you, ready. Are you ready? I'm surprised I even got this far. I mean, I mean, you did. And really we have one more left. And I think, I think it. that it's best if we move on to that. Okay. So this sauce Thank on you. Hot Ones is called the Last Dab. And they call it the Last Dab because it's tradition to not only just shake it up, but also put an extra little dab on the oh last God. wing um, before you have it. So I know that we've got our dips, but I think it's only fair, only fair to the format if after we dip a little bit, we'll put a little extra on at the end. Sounds good. Uh, last one. I think we want to oh. definitely wait. Oh, no, you got it. <laughs> Cheers. You can do it. You can do it. It smells like my nostrils are going to, like, be on fire. We'll be fine. We're all, we're all going to do great. Cheers. I will say the first taste is really good. I don't like taste that, anything. Th that is a good taste. I think your taste buds are just gone. <laughs> wait, I actually can't taste anything. Should I be concerned? <laughs> We'll, we'll take it up with your doctor afterward. Um, Should I dip another one? I, I don't know what to yeah, do. Yeah, dip more. Do, do it. Do it. <laughs> That'll solve it. That'll solve it. See, I don't find this one has flavor. I like, I don't find the flavor of this anymore, but I can feel the, the heat coming. I actually don't taste anything. I'm actually scared now. <laughs> You'll be okay. You'll be fine. Yeah, it's coming out of uh, Smoke and Ed Curry's farm who, for those of the guys that watch the show, Smokin' Ed Curry is the one who actually created the Carolina Reaper. He's the inventor of it, and the inventor of many other psychotic peppers. Um, but oh, I don't I think feel it's... It. <laughs> seeing as you've... Uh, it doesn't seem to step up that much over eight. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't. It doesn't, despite the fact that it's somehow like 20 times more. But yeah. Or is it that the creator of that is involved in the... the, the Maybe. Um, Maybe, that's for sure. But, so seeing as uh, people, a lot of people no notice a lot of your lectures and, and, and a lot of people enjoy watching them and we've always enjoyed the opportunity to get to go to your class again. And through that, you've gained sort of that near celebrity status as we talked about earlier. Is that something that, um, that you found built up like linearly over time or did you see that there was like a moment in time where you kind of exploded or do you think there's reasons as to why you kind of gain that status? Um, that's a really hard question for me to answer, but uh, especially because I'm going to have trouble talking. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think there's part of it's a lecture. Part of it's that I willingly engage in other settings. I go to the university fair and talk to incoming students. Yeah. I did orientation. I was the program director for business and economics. For economics, I've done it for maybe six years. <laughs> this one also builds. <laughs> I may have eh, eat this and eat. Okay. Um, yeah. And. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you, need to take, you need to take a bit of a lap around. Okay. Take a bit of a lap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's, Adonis, it's Adonis reactions. Um, okay, so <laughs> um, the uh, and then I started engaging. Like I engaged on Twitter. I've engaged on Reddit more recently. Not so much on Instagram. You engaged on Reddit? Yeah. Oh, interesting. What have what have you uh, what have you talked about? How does answer people's questions? If someone asks me a question, if someone asks a question that is Normally on Reddit, the only things I answer are things that are straight policy questions. Like, right. here's the answer to your question. Here's the link to the Laurier page that answers, like, is the official answer to your question. Yeah. Because, and I normally do it when I see the first answer to someone's question is wrong. Right. right? right. And so, no, yeah. that's not, no. Like, so, 
and I've been willing to engage on those kinds of questions. And I'll, I've said to uh, other people, our former dean of students, our current dean of students, I'll talk to anyone anywhere, basically. Um, and uh, that's just part of what it is. I also, when you teach 2,000 students every year, Sorry, my tongue feels like it's swelling up. It's yeah. good. Um, the uh, when you teach two thousand students every year, lots of people know me, right? Mm -hmm. They know, or at least they know who I am. And exactly. so you start talking to someone, and then other people start talking to you, and and so that's always that's always been something that that I've sort of enjoyed. And that's where the I mean that's where Twitter started. Was I would answer questions that were, it was just faster to answer a question on Twitter, than to answer. 30 different student questions coming in by email. So yeah. actually where it started, we, when we used to, when we um, run the EC120 midterm in person or EC140, we would let everybody keep the answer key after, or the answer page, mm -hmm. or the question page, and we'd post the answers right away. And people would check their answers. Mm -hmm. And we'd immediately get people complaining, like, you marked this question wrong. Yeah. And the, the, where it started, people would do that, put that on, well, on Twitter. And we go back with, you're right, we did. We'll fix it. And we'll fix it before we actually mark the test. Right. And so that engagement back and forth by, with students you know, on social media or anywhere else, I find really enjoyable. But I also find it makes my job easier. And so right. that's where I came from. So, And it was, it's, it's, I think it, it built over time. I, hopefully it's peaked here because people yelling at me in Sobeys is weird. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to students, so it's yeah. good. All right. Well, we all made it to the finish line. Thank God. I'm genuinely most proud of, of Ananya here. But we do have one last thing. Ken, that camera, that camera, that camera. If you wanted to tell the students one last thing after your experience here today, what do you have to tell the audience? Just enjoy yourself in university. I think the, the, my, my message to students is... <laughs> There are lots of different ways to be a university student. If the way you're being an interview in a university student isn't enjoyable, change what you're doing. Whether that's go out and do more stuff, do less stuff, find a different situation to live in, take courses part-time if that's an option in your program. Sorry, double degree students. <laughs> um, the, uh, um, all of those are things that I did as a student. All of those things I encourage people to do. University is supposed to be fun. And if it's not being fun, do something about that, right? And it's and the key is it's not for someone, and someone else can't fix that, right? Because if, if university is not fun for you, it's fun for a whole bunch of other people. And we're not going to change the way it works because you're not having fun. We've got to bring you along into it. And if you're not sure what to do, talk to people. Talk to other students. Talk to faculty. We were all students once. If there's a faculty member that you think resonates, they were, what they, their mindset seems to work fit with yours, Go talk to them about things outside of the academic experience because we'll talk to you. Yeah. And uh, so that would generally, that's my biggest thing is university is supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, stop. If not, don't stop. If it's not fun, do something different. Ken, we thank you so much for coming out. Shout out to Wilfs for being able to host this, Sam. Thank you. We know we went over time. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. I want to shout out to the team. If one of you guys can throw, uh, spin that camera around. Actually, everybody come around. Um, on this uh, double degree club team, we've got plenty of people that you're gonna be seeing throughout the term. Um, come on here, give a little wave to the camera. Uh, James, you're in too. Everybody's in. You guys need to you guys do that too. Why are you sitting there? <laughs> we finally get the opportunity to Michelle, feed these people. In. Michelle, get in, oh get in, Michelle, Is get James in. James in the picture? Yeah. Okay. We're all in, we're all in. Why but we all go on this? Hi everyone. Yep. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you, and great job, everyone. Great job. Double the Trouble is brought to you by the University of Waterloo and Wilfrid Laurier University's Double Degree Club. This episode was produced by me, Ananya Ori. It was engineered and edited by Ahmad Mian. Video production was led by James Ayong, Michelle Yan, and Angie Ren. We had additional assistance from Vivek Bardwaj, Jimmy Zan, and Dwani Patel. Our team also includes Guo Chen, Prisha Serene, and Claire Shen. Special thanks to Professor Ken Jackson for talking with us and to Sam Anhorn, Ashley Atchinson, and J.S. Balaskantan at Wilfs for sponsoring this episode. Thanks for listening.